Numerous calls to impeach Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh after the New York Times uncovered another allegation from about 30 or so years ago with no corroboration that didn't actually come from any victim at all. And apparently the victim denies even remembering. That's where we're at. It's, it's rather shocking to say the least. Look, maybe something like this happened, but how many of the accusations made, made against Brett Kavanaugh back in a year ago turned out to be false or recanted or the stories changed? How is this grounds for impeachment? Well, they're now claiming that Kavanaugh lied under oath because new allegations surfaced. The whole thing to me seems completely and utterly absurd. So here's what we'll do. Let's go through the story and let me just give you the breakdown as to what's happening. But I want to stress, along with these new allegations of misconduct against Brett Kavanaugh from freshman year of college, we have this tweet from Molly Hemingway who said, in the book, it, they say the woman named as being the victim apparently doesn't have any memory of the incident. And I also want to stress, where is this all coming from? Apparently, it's coming from a new book that's being sold. Yes, that's right. The New York Times has a few people who are apparently going to be selling a book and in it, juicy, juicy drama. Perhaps a lot of the news we hear about what's going on in politics is just meant to drive book sales to benefit people personally, regardless of the damage they cause in our, in our country and our culture. Well, let's start with the Huffington Post and figure out why they want Kavanaugh impeached. And, and I've got a bunch of tweets pulled up. Donald Trump has responded saying that the DOJ should get involved. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. There's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical option. But of course, the best thing you can do is just share this video. This is a very contentious subject of which you can notice if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook that I've censored many words. That's right. YouTube deranks independent political commentary for talking about the top trend in the world. I kid you not. There's nothing I can do about it. If YouTube doesn't want to recommend my content because I'm talking about regular politics like everybody else, so be it. That's why I ask you to share this video because they can't censor sharing. If they want to, you know, derank my video, fine. If you guys like it, please share. Let's read. Huffington Post says Democratic presidential contender Julian Castro and some former U.S. attorneys called for a new investigation into Brett Kavanaugh and the past FBI probe into his behavior as another accusation of misconduct against the Supreme Court Associate Justice surfaced. A, a, a claim, in my opinion, that doesn't even make sense. Let me, let me just, okay, let's read it. Classmate Max Steer told two New York Times reporters that he saw Kavanaugh with his pants down at a drunken Yale University party where his friends pushed Kavanaugh's privates into the hands of a female student. I'm not quite sure how that works. And I mean this sincerely. Can you explain to me how you push someone's privates into the hands of a female? I, I can't figure out that logistically. The report was similar to an allegation lodged against Kavanaugh last year by a former classmate, Deborah Ramirez. Steer informed senators and the FBI of the incident during Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing, but it was never investigated according to the Times. There's one simple explanation as to why it wasn't investigated. How do you investigate 30 year old allegations where half the people can't remember it. And the woman in this story now apparently has no memory of it even happening. What are they going to investigate? Some guy told us this. The woman said she has no idea. Never, can't remember anything like that. Case closed. It seems like everything is breaking down. I've said it a million times, but look, social institutions must operate on trust. And we don't have that anymore. I don't trust Kamala Harris when she comes out and says that Brett Kavanaugh lied under oath and he should be impeached. He must be impeached. We have numerous people saying, can you impeach a Supreme Court justice? Yes. Will they? No, we must impeach. You have this David Rothkopf. As with Trump, impeachment of Kavanaugh should not be considered merely an option. It is a moral obligation. I'm not going to defend what Mitch McConnell did with Obama's appointee before Trump got elected. That's political posturing too. But it's not the same as levying false accusations against somebody. I don't even, let's not even call them false. Let's just say 30 year old uncorroborated allegations. It's nearly a year later and I'm making another video about this. They're rehashing old stories that no one cares about. Apparently someone's trying to sell a book and that now is being used as grounds for impeachment. This person, award winning photographer, can you impeach a Supreme Court judge asking for Brett Kavanaugh and a beer emoji? And that's where we're at. And now we have this ex-prosecutor demands congressional investigation after a latest report on the FBI and Brett Kavanaugh. Well, apparently 
it, it all comes down to selling a book. A book that Molly, Molly Hemingway has read, she tweets, the book notes quietly that the woman Max Steer named as having been supposedly victimized by Kavanaugh and friends denies any memory of the alleged event. Seems, I don't know, significant. It does. What's the point of this? It all, it's, it's, it's just a rehashed story, but it's being used as a political weapon. Brett Kavanaugh will never live this down. So because of this, actually, we can see Donald Trump stepping into the fray. So here's what I want to do. Let's read a bit about what Donald Trump has to say. And then I want to go through a past story about Deborah Ramirez and kind of break this down. So Trump tweets, now the radical left Democrats and their partner, the lamestream media, are after Brett Kavanaugh again, talking loudly of their favorite word impeachment. He is an innocent man who has been treated horribly. Such lies about him. They want to scare him into turning liberal. And then something interesting happened. See, Donald Trump then tweeted, Brett Kavanaugh should start suing people for libel or the Justice Department should come to his rescue. The lies being told about him are unbelievable. False accusations without recrimination. When does it stop? They are trying to influence his opinions. Can't let that happen. Now, before I talk into the weirdness that is surrounding this, I want to point out there's something incredible that happens when a third party makes an accusation, when the victim can't remember it, and they use that as evidence to try and impeach a Supreme Court justice. It means that things that wouldn't be admissible in court are being used as condemnations definitively. But what's really interesting about all of this, back when Deborah Ramirez made the allegation against Brett Kavanaugh, it was ridiculous and it didn't make sense. She barely remembered it, apparently had to confer with, De with, with her lawyer for six days before finally deciding she thinks she remembers it actually happened. That story, which was shaky and uncorroborated, has now become a fact because the story gets repeated so often, people don't look into the history of how the story was presented, and now they just remember that's what happened. Before I show this, I, I, I want to show this, right? This is the top 10 serious problems with new accusations against Kavanaugh. Before I do, however, I, I, I have no idea why. This is the news. This is the news world we live in. Trump misspells libel in furious outburst over new Brett Kavanaugh assault allegation. There you go. Breaking news. I kid you not. They, they post this as a breaking news story. Trump said liable instead of libel. No matter what Trump does or says, it is a breaking news story. And now you and, and, this, and this is a good example of the political landscape and the media landscape. The media wants juice. They want to go nuts. And you end up with someone like Brett Kavanaugh, according to Time magazine, who has sided with uh, the liberal side of the court almost as often as the conservative side of the court, but leaning towards the conservative side. He's rather moderate in his rulings. Although he has helped conservatives, that's to be expected. He was appointed by Trump, but he's not some fringe far-right extremist. That's what they want to paint him as. Now, because, I, I, here's what I believe. Trump is going to win 2020. Ruth Bader Ginsburg will be replaced and potentially even Stephen Breyer. That means Trump might appoint two more justices. What do you do if you can't win? If you've lost the fight, if your party is fractured, impeach. And they will grasp at whatever straws are floating above them to try and stay afloat, even if it means 30-year-old uncorroborated third-party allegations. Or they'll attack the president for, for tweeting the wrong word. And then Trump deletes it and reposts it. And there it is. Apparently, it was up for like an hour. Here's what I want to do. It's very important when looking at this allegation, which I will stress comes from a third party, the, the alleged victim doesn't remember it. And for some reason, it's being treated as, as, you know, a legitimate claim. I want to go back to the claims from Deborah Ramirez and the other claims and talk about why they are not credible. People are now looking back a year later and they're forgetting everything that was wrong with these stories. Here's a story from the Daily Wire, September 24th, 2018. It's, it's a year ago. It's a year later. And here we are again. They want to impeach. They want to, they want to impeach from the Daily Wire. The New Yorker published new accusations on Sunday from a second woman who alleges that Brett Kavanaugh acted inappropriately towards her at a party during their college years. The reason Deborah Ramirez is so significant is because she claimed that apparently she, uh, she alleges that while she was at a Yale party, intoxicated to the point that she was on the ground in a foggy state, slurring her words, Kavanaugh pulled his pants down and exposed himself to her. That's the story that Max Steer is telling. However, the woman he's claiming was involved doesn't remember it. This is important for one reason. Deborah Ramirez doesn't remember if Kavanaugh was the person who did this. 
Why should we believe Max Steer if the woman doesn't remember? And if, if uh, according to Deborah Ramirez, it may not even been Kavanaugh. You see how this is working? Maybe it happened. Maybe it wasn't Kavanaugh. And that's it. And the woman they're claiming doesn't remember it. It might have been Ramirez. It's, it's the same story. But let's look at why the story, you know, how, how it breaks down first. The New Yorker could not find a single witness who could put Kavanaugh at the alleged party. Buried more than 1,000 words into the report, Ronan Farrow and Jane Meyer wrote, the New Yorker has not confirmed with other eyewitnesses that Kavanaugh was present at the party. The magazine contacted several dozen classmates of Ramirez and Kavanaugh regarding the incident. Many did not respond to interview requests. Others declined to comment or said they did not attend or remember the party. No corroboration. Two, the New York Times could not find a single person who could corroborate Ramirez's claims. A third party news agency, the New York Times, couldn't confirm it. The Times has interviewed several dozen people over the past week in an attempt to corroborate her story and could find no one with firsthand knowledge. The man accused of egging on Kavanaugh denied Ramirez's allegation and vouched for Kavanaugh. A third person that Ramirez claims at the party says she was not there. Five, Ramirez contacted her former classmates asking about the incident and admitted she was not sure that Kavanaugh was the person who exposed himself. A woman who claims she was best friends with Ramirez says Ramirez never mentioned the story. Seven, Ramirez, just like Blasey Ford, is a registered Democrat and is dedicated to leftist causes. Eight, Ramirez wasn't even sure her memory was correct until she spent six days going over it with her Democrat lawyer. Nine, Ramirez admits there are holes in her memory due to how much she drank at the party. And 10, people who knew Ramirez after her time at Yale say they should uh, say that she never once mentioned the incident. And here we are. Here we are now with a story that was not corroborated in the first place. Accuser told Ronan Farrow she wasn't sure of the story. The same story now is being rehashed. I kid you not. It is, the, it is basically the same story. Max Steer is claiming that basically the same thing happened. But I, but, I, but I ask you again, how does one push privates into the hands of a female? Did they like push his butt and he like lunged forward and then she put her hands up? I guess. I guess the bigger question here is for one, why are we even having the conversation? Kavanaugh is the number one trend right now. It's the number one trend on Twitter. Trump is tweeting about it, saying something should be done. People are arguing with it. They're talking about Donald Trump's, you know, tweet being misspelled. How can we function as a country if a year after a Supreme Court justice is confirmed, you have numerous calls for impeachment from Julian Castro to, I believe I have another story. I guess I don't have it pulled up. You've got Kamala Harris stepping up as well. You have Julian Castro, Kamala, oh yeah, I have the tweet from Kamala Harris, calling for his impeachment. What do we do? If Trump, if, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, ends up leaving the Supreme Court or passing and Trump appoints someone new, are they going to do the exact same thing? Can we allow the court of public opinion to present uncorroborated claims and destroy the credibility of somebody? Here's the most important part. Brett Kavanaugh was vetted numerous times. Every time he served on a court, he had to be vetted. He was vetted before he became a Supreme Court justice. Now he's on the Supreme Court, vetted again, and new allegations emerge just in time for someone to sell a book. Now, here's what's really funny. From Fox News, New York Times sparks furor with tweet describing alleged Kavanaugh behavior as harmless fun. They were talking about the incident in the story, and they said it may seem like harmless fun, but it's not. And there you have it. Now we are swimming in another controversy targeting Brett Kavanaugh, and it won't stop. Do you think they'll give up now? No. They're going to call for investigations. They are calling for investigations. Let's be real. Castro calls for latest claim against Kavanaugh to be investigated. Kamala Harris is calling for his direct impeachment, as are many other people. In this story, we can see that Sean Kasten says, I don't feel like we talk enough about the fact that Kavanaugh lied under oath to the United States Senate, and the majority of the United States senator didn't care. What did he lie about? Because they uncovered a new story? We have this one, Joyce uh, Aileen. There must be a full congressional investigation. This is a former U.S. attorney. Uh, Joyce, it says Joyce Vance. Oh, okay, I guess whatever. Uh, we must, there must be a full congressional investigation to determine whether someone, and if so, who, gave orders that kept the FBI from investigating credible allegations and speaking to witnesses who reached out to them. We were told this was a full investigation. It's really simple. If you go to the FBI and say 30 years ago, someone pulled their pants down and wiggled their junk, they're going to be like, what do, you want me to, what do you want me to do about that? When I, I went to the police because I once had a vehicle stolen and they said, we're going to be honest with you. What do you want us to do? We're going to take the report down 
We're going to write down the plate. If we see it somewhere, then we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. But what do you think they're going to do? Do you think, you think the police are going to go all CSI Miami? A lot of people seem to think that because of these crime drama shows, the police and the FBI show start dusting for prints and then they pull up all this evidence and then there you go. No, they write it down. And they say, have a nice day. It's actually funny when you look at the Jesse Smollett story, because that's probably what he thought was going to happen. And then the police actually decided to go all CSI Miami and did a search. And then they found evidence that, you know, leads us to believe he made the whole thing up. But in this instance, we have several 30-year-old allegations that never came up before that are coming up at a completely contentious time. And what, what do you expect them to do? There's no video. There's no photo. There's one guy. There's no corroboration. And there's no victim. The victim says she doesn't know. And they're now saying because of that, the FBI was obstructed. This says to me that they will not stop in their quest for power. They will take any lie they can and use it as justification. What's scary is there are people on the left who believe by any means necessary, which means even though there's no way to prove this in a court of law, even though we must protect the innocent, they want to win enough that they will say, don't care. I don't care whether it's true or not. Go for it. Did Brett Kavanaugh do anything wrong? Maybe. Maybe it was a drunk college frat boy. But why are we talking about it a year later? Because we can't move on. We couldn't move on from 2016. The left refused to let it go. All of these people who said Trump supporters will never accept defeat, they'll sue and they'll complain. And who was it? It was the Democrats. It was the left. They refused to let it go. Russiagate for three years. Brett Kavanaugh gets appointed because Trump won. They refuse to let it go. They come up with all these allegations, things that don't make sense. Even Christine Blasey Ford's story didn't make sense. She claimed she was afraid to fly. And then they asked her, do you fly frequently? And she said, yes. They claimed, or, or she claims, she now, she now has two front doors because she's scared and she needs a, a second, you know, uh, path to e escape. And then they said, aren't you airbnb being the property? That's why you have a second door. Oh, right. The stories that don't add up. And a sane, rational person who, look, I, I wouldn't have voted for Trump. It is what it is. He got elected. That's how the game is played. I'm not, I'm not going to cry about it. Is looking at what's happening and can't find a sane and logical reason as to why any of this would happen outside of they are playing dirty. They are playing dirty and they will use this to get Brett Kavanaugh off the Supreme Court. Now, in the end, it won't. It won't work. What are they, what are they, what are they going to do? There's no evidence. What can they do? They can call for investigation and they're going to say he lied under oath. He lied to Senate, whatever. They're going to find any smidgen of unprovable, uncorroborated claim and say, oh, well, you know, the story might not be true, but he lied. That's what they're doing to Trump right now. Russia Gate was fake news. So what do they say? Well, he obstructed justice. And there it is. That's the grounds for impeachment now. Not that Russia Gate was true. They're now stretching it to whatever, to whatever degree they can. That's what they're going to do with Brett Kavanaugh. I got to say, I feel bad for the guy. Um, I, I, in my personal opinion, his views on the Fourth Amendment and technology are a bit um, archaic, and I don't think he understands tech well enough. I'm not a fan of Brett Kavanaugh, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I think it comes and goes in waves. And in this instance, you have conservatives who are taking back the courts, who have taken the executive branch. They did the same thing with Bush. What do you expect? But if you play dirty, if you refuse to abide by social norms and our institutions, how can we move forward? I don't know how we can actually progress as a country when one side is willing to lie, cheat, and steal to get whatever they want. Now, now again, I will, I will criticize Mitch McConnell for, the Obama, for, for you know, what he did with Obama's appointee. Fine. But that was wholly different. That was just like, I don't know, to me, that was gross politicking. Obama gave them the moderate they asked for, and they, they, they said, no, we're going to get the person that Trump wants because we can. We can hold things up. That's politics. You see it both on both sides. You see it with, you know, Jerry Nadler and what, like 98 saying, you can't impeach the president in this way. And now saying we're going to impeach the president. They go back and forth. Fine. But this is a whole new ball game. These are 30 year old fake, fake, you know, as far as I'm concerned, just false allegations, 30 years old. They're stepping things up to the point where I fear it's all going to break down. No one's going to respect the rule of law. No one's going to respect social norms. And there won't be a new election. There won't be a new appointee because no matter what happens, they're going to say it was a cheat. Trump wins. It was Russia. Three years of a Russia, invest Russia investigation. We find, yeah, you know, Russia may have tried, you know, swinging, you know, some votes, but didn't really have a big impact. They don't care. They say Trump is illegitimate. Then Trump can appoint somebody and everything after this point. So here's what I think. 
It's 20, you know, it's 2016 never ending. They'll never let it go. They'll say everything after 2016 is void. So by, by their standards, they can do or say whatever they want. Don't think it'll end here. The next appointee Trump gets, it will keep going. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment will be coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all next time.